everyone for staying on today. Um, we're going to um, start our Black History program. As our theme this year is celebrating our Black roots. Do you guys remember back in the 1970s, there was a show, a miniseries called Roots um, that was um, traced the lineage of Alex Haley's family. So it is important to know where you came from and it's even more important to know where you're going. So we're gonna celebrate our roots as African-Americans, not only in the outside, but also we're gonna celebrate our roots of members who are members of the church. And we want to, you to know that you are, we are from a proud people. Don't listen to what people say that black people are lazy or black people are this or black people are that. Just know you are from a, a strong heritage of people and we should have that uh, feeling at all times as African-Americans. First of all, we will now start our program. We wanna first of all thank uh, Sister Johnson for working with us to get this program um, started and it's successful. We will first have the Savannah Family Talk and they will talk to us today about the influence of celebrating Black history. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Black history is important. All right. Black history helps to change the world. I have learned about important people who had who helped advance our culture around the world. Black history is important because it reminds us that we have achieved great things in the past and this shows how great our culture is and can be. By learning about different people and events that help shape our history, I can be encouraged to strive for greatness in my life. Black history is important because it helps us to pass down a legacy of Black tradition and knowledge that can help our future generation just like in Bible times, when we read of the children of Israel telling stories that were passed down from their forefathers about God's word and God's love for us, we too can instill the same lessons learned through the study of our people and our history to our children and grandchildren. We can draw on the strength of perseverance and self-determination to aspire to greatness by learning on Malcolm X, George Carver, Adam C.J. Walker, and Maya Angelou, all who have contributed to the advancement of Black people here in the United States. So yes, Black history is important. And it continues to evolve every day, bringing forth a generation of new leaders to continue the work set forth by our ancestors. <clears throat> Understanding the significance of Black history acknowledges the positive actualities of Blacks and dismisses the negative stereotypes of our people. It, cre it, it creates the proper identity of who we really are versus embracing the concepts of who we are not. It lays the groundwork for honoring the intangibles such as intestinal fortitude, courage and humility of our ancestors while creating the insight and tools to teach the right legacy to our seeds. It allows for us to be proud of what we were, thank God through Jesus for what we are and what we will become in his will. And that is why black history is important to us. Thank you, Savannah. So let's give the Savannahs a hand. Thank you for that talk. Very influential talk. Thank you, um, you guys. Next, we will have 
our, for our next um, participant in our Black History program, we will now have a poem, I Am the Black Child, um, and it will be presented by Desiree Lepour. Desiree, the floor is yours. Hello. I Am the Black Child by Michael Wynn. I am the Black Child. I am special. Ridicule will not sway me. I am strong. Obstacles cannot stop me. I hold my head high and proudly proclaim my uniqueness. I hold my peace and continue forward through adversity. I am proud of my culture and my heritage. I am confident that I can achieve my every goal. I am becoming all that I can be. I am the black child. I am a child of God. Thank you. Thank you, Desiree. We appreciate that. I am the black child. Um, I'm written by Michael Wynn, presented by Desiree LaCour. Thank you very much, Desiree. Next, we will have a song, um, I Am God's Child, this, which will be led by Zazaria Lewis and Kimberly Holman. Zazaria and Kim, you have the floor. See them, so we'll skip that um, and we'll come back once they're on. We will have a poem, um, which will be um, read by Alana Hamlet, and the poem is entitled, Go to the Back, Rosa Parks. Alana, the floor is yours. Hello. My poem is entitled, Go to the Back, Rosa Parks, Author Unknown. Go to the back of the bus, Rosa Parks. Go to the back and stay. No, I won't. I think that's unfair. And I'm just too tired today. But everyone knows the rules, Rosa Parks. Everyone knows if you're Black, you can't eat at white restaurants. And on buses, you sit in the back. So now it's time to move, Rosa Parks. No, I'm not moving at all. I've got a voice, and I'm going to use it. And thousands will hear the call. We're coming to sit with you, Rosa Parks. People black and white did say, we're coming to change America and bring equality here to stay. Right, all right. Thank you, Alana. Very good, very good. And we're gonna, um, ironically, God works, in, um, God works in this way. And we're gonna learn more in detail about Rosa Parks and um, about some background about the Montgomery bus boycott in a little bit um, in our program. It's just ironic that she read that poem. We will now have a song that um, amazing grace. Um, Haley is going to be the soloist. Y'all so give Haley your support as she is going to um, sing a solo. Amazing grace. Haley, it's on you, ma'am. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. 
Man, hey, man, we have a soloist on our hand, uh, Haley. Amazing grace. Good job, Haley. Hey, Amen. We will now have a poem by Haley's big sister, um, A Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. This will be presented by Aaliyah Jones. Hi. Um, I'll be doing A Dream Deferred. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up? like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? That, that's right to the point, um, Langston Hughes. So um, young people who don't know that he is a very important black um, poet. So um, if you have time, parents, um, read some more of his works. Thank you, Aaliyah, for that um, presentation, the dramatic reading of A Dream Deferred. Thank you. We will next have a speech, a talk, from one of our young men, um, Cameron Tatum. Um, he will be giving a speech entitled, A Young Black Man in a New World. Cameron, is all you, sir. Hello. Good morning, church. Give me one second. I apologize. I apologize for the time I'm taking. So this is my speech, my lecture that I personally, personally made, came up with called a black, a young black man in a new world. If you all do not take anything away from my speech or my lecture, please take this one thing. Opportunities are a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. Now, when I stated that, I didn't mean opportunities that everyone have right now. No. I was talking about opportunities that our ancestors didn't have back in the day. Or how our ancestors changed many things for us to be right here, right now. See, me growing up, I always, my opportunities were always open. I always had an opportunity to do something for me to better myself, to better my family. So I decided to take them. But as I got older, that, always, that wasn't always, I didn't always take the opportunity on my opportunities why I do not know. But since I've grown up, came to college, I realized that you have nothing but opportunities. Back in the day, during slavery times, 
we had the opportunity to go shopping when we needed to. We didn't have the opportunities to even go worship when we wanted to. But right now, there are many things that young people do. I did it too. I had I have the opportunity to go to church every Sunday. Do I? No, I do not. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Do that need to change? Yes, it does. Because I know my Lord has blessed me each and every Sunday, each and every day to come here, to go to school, to go to work. The Lord has done numerous things each oh. every day. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. And um, oh, y'all can save me. Can save me. The cameras are here. I'm sorry. Okay. Back in the day, opportunities were very slim. You couldn't do everything that you wanted to do, needed to do. But right now, as young people, I believe that we take advantage for things that we don't need to take advantage of. Right now, it's right now, it's easier than back then of course of course we don't need to take advantage of what we have right now because if we were stuck back in the day we wouldn't know what to do Again, me coming to college, that was, that was, it was tough. It was tough. It was tough. <laughs> yeah, ha having the opportunity to do everything that I couldn't do when I was at home. I will hear, I don't. There's no churches out here. There's a lot of bad influence. There's a lot of drugs, drinks. There's a lot of, there's a lot of temptation. Um, there's a lot of Everything. There's a lot of everything. We don't. I slipped up a couple of times. I'm not afraid to admit it. We're all young. I slipped up a couple times and I'm not gonna lie to anybody about this world. You would get tempted. You would, you would get drawn in into a lot of things you don't wanna do. That devil is gonna keep on trying to pull you back. But you can't let that happen. The Lord 
the Lord will stay by your side no matter what. Even if you don't want him there. Kids, no matter what, you have the opportunity, the chance, the liberty to achieve something that your ancestors didn't have the chance to achieve. Y'all can go to school and get an education. Full education. You yeah, might come with some bumps and bruises. Sometimes you want to quit. Sometimes you don't want to do. That's understandable. But just pray. And have a mindset of what you're going to do. There many times I want to quit. There are many times I want to do. But that's my, that's my speech. A young black man in the new world. All right, Cameron, thank you so much. I appreciated that speech so much. And you talking from the heart, giving real life application and being honest um, and, and, and sharing it, and his vulnerabilities and giving advice to our young people. Thank you, Cam, very much. Um, we trust that everyone has had a good time so far, and we, I want to personally thank everyone who has um, participated in the program thus far. You've done an excellent job. May God continue to bless you guys and your walk uh, in life. Um, for a few moments um, before we end, I want to share some memories and some facts about a truly unique and unsung hero for civil rights in America. He is no other than Dr. Brother Fred David Gray. I'm gonna share some facts about Brother Gray with us. Brother Fred David Gray was the attorney for Claudette Cloven. Actually, that was his first client. And, and for those who don't know who she is, she was the first person to, um, to, uh, in Montgomery to not give her per seat six months prior to Rosa Parks. That was um, Brother Gray's first client. And also Claudette was named in the lawsuit that was presented to the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court overturned the segregation laws in Montgomery about the bus. Um, so Claudette was very important on Sun Carol herself. Dr. King, Rosa Park, and John Lewis. He also was the lead attorney for the Montgomery Improvement Association and the Freedom Riders, the Selma March, and a Tuskegee syphilis study. He was portrayed by Cuba Gooden Jr. in the film Selma. Um, and, and he was portrayed by Cuba. And it was funny, funny little story when I spoke with Dr. Gray, Brother Gray. Um, he was um, very surprised that they included him in that movie, his story in that movie. And the um, producers um, rented out a movie theater in Montgomery, Alabama for a private screening um, two months prior to the movie becoming pu um, public. So he and his friends and other luminaries of the civil rights movement who were still living um, um, were able to um, view the um, Selma. He, is a he, is, he was a former minister of the large church and he, is curr he currently serves as an elder to the Tuskegee Church of Christ. And Brother Gray recently celebrated his 90th birthday in, on, on December the 14th. He has written a book, as you see there, a book, Bus Ride to Justice. And the, and the gentleman, um, he, um, he's with Dr. King, and he's standing next to Dr. King and Brother Gray. What was amazing to me, and I want this to be known to young people and to older people, Brother Gray was 24 years old when he started as an attorney and working with the Montgomery Bus Boycott. And Dr. King was 26. So these two young men changed um, the world, changed the country, and didn't let age or experience get in their way. So I wanted to keep that in mind. 
I have some photos that I'm going to show you um, from his book. As you see on my right, I mean, my left, you know, this gentleman here, that is Brother Marshall Keeble. Brother Gray was one of Brother Keeble's boring creatures. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And this is Brother Gray when he would travel I mean, with Brother Keeble across the country to preach the gospel to different parts of the country in the South, basically, to African Americans, Dr. Keeble. As you see here, Brother Gray is in the background cheesing, as he said. He was so happy. They just won a case. Um, and, and Dr. King was released from jail and won a case. And, uh, and, and it's Dr. King and Coretta Scott King, his wife, there outside the courthouse. Also, as I mentioned before, Brother Gray was a minister of the gospel. This, he was a minister of the Newtown Church of Christ in Montgomery, Alabama. And as you see him by the cornerstone they placed in 1960 at that particular congregation. And he is Dr. Gray, Brother Gray right there. As I stated before, two of his most famous clients were Dr. King and Rosa Parks. Also in this photo here, um, Brother Gray, he was also the first African-American representative elected in the state of Alabama. And he's standing there with, um, with Coretta Scott King and he proposed the first um, statewide proposed uh, the Martin Luther King holiday in the state of Alabama. He proposed that he, back in 1972, I believe, in 1972, I believe, before it even caught ground across the country. He was he initiated that in the state of Alabama. Also, I like to read uh, some excerpts from his book, A Bus Ride to Justice, and get a little bit of background of Dr. Gray. It won't take for a few minutes. I will be reading. During the three year period that I attended Western Reserve University Law School in Cleveland, I served as assistant minister of the East 100th Street Church of Christ, which is now the University Street Church of Christ, where Dr. Brother J.S. Winston was the minister. For those who don't know who Dr. Um, Brother Winston is, that is the father in law to, Dr., to Brother um, Tony Roach who wrote our curriculum, um, who wrote our curriculum, the New Self um, um, on, um, curriculum uh, that we use on every Sunday and Wednesday. So Dr. Brother Winston is Dr. Roach's father-in-law, by the way. Um, he fir I first met Dr. Um, Brother Winston in 1945 in Fort Worth, Texas, when I was a boy preacher traveling with Brother Keeble. So even though I was studying for the practice of law, I continued to serve as a minister of the gospel. I was probably one of the first African Americans who was an attorney and a minister in the Church of Christ. Certainly in my home congregation in Montgomery, no one has ever heard of a preacher also being a lawyer. This created a problem for some of our members. Their experiences with lawyers were such that in many instances, they considered them liars, not worthy to be trusted. So I had the additional responsibility of demonstrating to my own church members that I could continue to be a preacher of the gospel and at the same time develop into an outstanding lawyer. This was an, a problem not only for the members of our local congregation, but also for the African-American brotherhood throughout the Churches of Christ. When I would return from the Nashville Christian Institute to attend seminars, some persons were rather apprehensive of my ability to be a preacher and a lawyer. This became controversial throughout the brotherhood. And when I became active as the lawyer of Dr. Martin Luther King, Mrs. Rosa Parks, in the bus protest in Montgomery, some of my churchmen had reservations. Even Brother Marshall Keeble, the great pioneer preacher who had carried me as a boy preacher around with him, representing the Nashville Christian Institute, probably did not understand my position. One preacher who had, who had been a student at NCI when I was there later said to Brother Keeble about me, quote, Fred Gray is smart. He is involved in the civil rights movement, end quote. Brother Keeble was reported to have replied, quote, he's too smart, end quote. I could understand Brother Keeble's position. A portion of his preaching and work in the church has been sponsored by white members of the Church of Christ 
And I'm quite confident that it was very difficult for him to not to understand how one of his former board preachers would now be standing in courtroom fighting against racial, racial discrimination. However, the, board, the brotherhood soon saw that even though I was a lawyer, I was still loyal to the church and continued to perform my ministerial duties. Over the years, I've been called upon many times by our leading church leaders across the nation to preach. There is no conflict in my mind about these two professions. On the contrary, having my life centered around Christ has assisted me in all the cases that I've handled throughout my practice. Uh, and ironically, um, Brother J.S. Winston performed his first wedding um, marriage ceremony and his wife, unfortunately, his first wife uh, is deceased and he was married again in 19, um, in 2000, I mean, in 2000. And this is a name that's familiar to my parents, brother and sister Johnson. Brother Thomas O. Jackson um, performed the ceremonies for his second wedding, um, 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 wedding ceremony in 2000. Thomas O. Jackson. All right, so I just wanted to share that little bit of information. I was able to meet Dr. Um, brother Gray um, six years ago, ironically, on his birthday in Alabama, uh, my brother and I um, took a civil rights um, tour across Alabama and Georgia. And and brother, I first heard of Brother Gray and heard him speak at the Garden Oaks congregation. And he and he told the congregation, anybody who wants to come and visit with me and see me, just give me a call. I'll be there. And you know when people say that, they say it out of being nice, but they really don't come through. So uh, two years later, when we took that um, that trip, um, the civil rights um, tour, um, we uh, called Brother Gray, and I left the message, and I was like, oh, he's not going to call back. He's not going to call back. Um, that Sunday, on our way back from Atlanta, I received a call from Brother Gray, and he told us, hey, I will be at church on Sunday night in Tuskegee, where he lives, at the Tuskegee Church of Christ, where he serves as an elder. Um, he will be there Sunday night. So if you wanted to meet him, we can meet him there. So of course, um, we ran, got in the car, and we get, skated over to um, his congregation. Little did we know that day we were there was his birthday on the 14th of December. And we were had the privilege of spending time with Brother Gray and having dinner with him. And we were able to discuss a lot of issues that were going on during that time and current issues at the time. Um, he, uh, one of the things that I learned was sometimes in the media, um, um, Dr. King is known as starting the Montgomery Board's Archive. It wasn't exactly that way. Dr. Uh, Dr. King was selected by a group of persons, leading business persons and ministers in that area of Montgomery. Dr. King did not start the bus boycott. He was selected as the spokesperson for the boycott, along with Ralph Abernathy as his assistant. And Brother Gray served at the, as the attorney. And he was recommended by, um, by one of the, um, Brother Gray's um, um, co-workers um, uh, because she stated that um, my preacher, this uh, Martin King, he can speak good, and he's young and he's a very powerful speaker. So on that recommendation, Dr. King was selected to lead that boycott. Um, Brother Gray also was the representative in Selma, Alabama. And if you, like I stated earlier, he worked that case. And also Freedom Fighter also, um, he, he spoke in front of the Supreme, he argued in front of the Supreme Court uh, on five separate occasions on different cases that reached the Supreme Court. Um, I'm not, there's so much to tell you about Brother Gray, but I'm not going to tell you anymore because I want you to, if you're interested, buy his book. And he reminded me of that. He said, I can't tell you everything because you won't buy my book. So he wanted to make sure that I bought his book. So he was very hospitable to us, um, very generous of his time. And I, and I will always remember that opportunity that I had to speak with someone who made an impact on our lives not only locally, but throughout the world as African-Americans. That is my presentation on, on Brother on Fred Gray.